This is how not to move on after a heartbreak. What is up, my dear friends, and welcome back to another episode on the Happy Heart Academy podcast, where I am going to be walking you right back to happiness, giving you the steps and the tips and the resources and the understanding, more importantly, on how you can go from heartbreak back to happiness. And today I'm excited to talk about this topic because it's inside of the academy, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about the topic to the broad audience that are not inside of the academy. And if you're not currently part of the ins uh, insiders of the academy at the Happy Heart Academy, be sure to check it out. The link will be in the bio below uh, or in the show notes below. And you can find it at community.happyheartacademy.com where ideally you learn how to create happiness after heartbreak by living more joyfully from your heart rather than your hurt by getting access to courses, resources, books, guides, quizzes, um, an intense weekly and monthly training by me your heartbreak coach teaching you how to walk back to happiness after heartbreak so that you can feel more aliveness in your life and relationships. Now, let's get on with the episode. Today, I spent some, some time this week uh, taking some notes. And if you're watching me on YouTube, this is my journal and I write in my journal all the time. And one of the things that I wrote down was, you know, one of the frequently asked questions that I get on a day-to-day -day basis is how do I begin to move on? Well, one of the best ways to learn how to move on is understanding how not to move on. You know, when you know what not to do and you just don't do those things, you begin to inch your way toward happiness after your heartbreak. And so today we're going to be covering, I don't know, maybe five different ideas um, that's going to help you understand how to begin to move on or what not to do uh, when, when it comes to moving on so that you can create ha happiness after your heartbreak. And one of the first things that I want to talk about that I wrote down on how not to move on. So remember, these are the things you shouldn't do in order to move on. Like if you don't do these things, you will be able to move on. If you do do these things, you won't be able to move on. I just want to make sure I'm pretty clear there. Um, but anyway, how not to move on. One of the first things I wrote down is you can't get under someone to get over someone. This is this idea is wrapped around that oftentimes, including myself, I was the one to do this. Um, you know, I, right after my heartbreak, I went into a relationship. Now, it wasn't a meaningful relationship to me. It was more of a rebound relationship. And I'm sure that that's oftentimes what most of us do out there, considering we have this void in our heart that leaves us feeling completely empty and broken alone. And we want to try to numb that. We try, want to try to avoid that. We want to try to distract ourselves from feeling that. And there is such thing as positive distraction. This is not one of them. Finding yourself under someone as a rebound so that you can get over your ex is not something that's going to help you move forward and let go. So when it comes to moving on, you can't be under someone and expecting to get on over someone. You know, you, you, in that case scenario, you develop this unhealthy attachment where you feel like you can't move on unless you are with somebody else. Like you feel like you can't even create happiness or feel love unless you are with someone. And this unhealthy attachment leaves you feeling unfulfilled and rather anxious and stressed and more alone. Because you honestly believe that somebody else outside of yourself will bring you what you're seeking. When, in my eyes, what I teach over at the Happy Heart Academy is everything that you need is within. And it's about unlocking your heart, opening your heart, so that you can live more joyfully from your heart rather than your hurt. So that you can experience the things that you are seeking outside of yourself, inside of yourself. So, a lot of the times when you're struggling with feeling worthy... You know, you're, you're waiting for someone else to make you feel worthy. You're waiting for someone else to make you feel happy. You're waiting for someone else to make you feel loved. You're making, you're waiting for someone else to heal you. These pillars ideally can be created within yourself. You have the power to be able to unlock and relinquish these personal powers within yourself so that you are your own happiness. You are your own love. You are your own worth. You are your own purpose and your identity. And ideally, let me just say one more time, you can't be under someone and expect to get over someone. So try to do your best to stay away from the rebound. You can have friends 
but never go sleeping with someone. It's going to cause you and them more hurt and it will relinquish the hurt people hurt people cycle because you're hurt. You're going to go out there and hurt somebody else because you don't really care about them. And if you stick around them long enough, you're going to end up in a more committed relationship that you never even wanted to be in because you're not man enough or woman enough to, to break it off because of how you're fearful of what they might say or what they might feel. It's just a mess. It's best to be left alone. Number two is you cannot move on if you suppress your feelings. Suppressing your feelings is a very negative way in which you um, can't process and move on. Okay, so when you suppress your feelings, you're not resolving your hurt. When you move past things in your mind, you're just suppressing the issue and you're not dealing with the issues what I have written in my notes here. So nonetheless, what I'm trying to get at is when you suppress your, your feelings, you're not allowing yourself to truly feel it in order to heal it. You're not allowing yourself to experience the pain. And when you don't allow yourself to experience the pain, it's going to be hard for you to move on. How so? Well, you ignore that there was any hurt um, taken place. And when you ignore that there was and, and, and deny, ignore and deny that there's any hurt being taken place, you'll want to get back into that relationship because you're ignoring, you're denying, and you're not, and you're suppressing these hurtful, painful feelings that you don't want to deal with. And when you do that, you live in a false reality. And sometimes living in that false reality will bring you back to your ex and put you in the same place that hurt you. You can't keep going back to the same place that hurt you and expecting yourself to be healed. That's never going to be the case. And what you need to do is learn how to work through your emotions in a releasing your emotions in a healthy manner that allows you to feel your emotions. Because if you, I believe, if you truly begin to feel your hurt, you'll begin to heal your heart. And you won't move back with your ex. That's number two. So you can't keep suppressing your feelings and expecting yourself to get over someone. Number three, using distractions to cope. You cannot continue to use distractions in order for you to cope with this heartbreak. There's a time and place for some distractions, like I talk about at the Happy Heart Academy. Uh, there, there are some positive distractions that you can implement into your life that can help you move on. But there's negative distractions that most people run to, have a natural tendency to run to. And what I ask you is those natural tendencies that you're currently running to to cope with the pain, you stop those. What are some of those natural tendencies? Well, ideally, it's about running to another person, whether it's a, you know, a, a new partner. It's that rebound effect. It's running to alcohol. It's literally laying in bed doing absolutely nothing with your life. It's, you know, overeating. It's undersleeping. It's social media stalking. It's manipulating. It's these things that you're currently doing that's stopping you from being able to move on and let go and create happiness in return. you got to learn how to stop distracting yourself from the pain. And that goes into number two, suppressing your feelings. you got to feel it to heal it. you got to stop figuring out. you got to identify what you do to cope with your hurt and then stop using those coping mechanisms if they are causing you more hurt in the long run. Now, if they're healthy coping mechanisms, for example, I'll give you a couple. Meditation journaling, speaking to a loved one or a family friend or joining the academy. There's things that you can do to positively distract yourself, reading a good book on the topic on how to overcome heartbreak, listening to a podcast, going on a walk. These things can be enlightening. These things can be powerful. These things can help you move on and create happiness after heartbreak. Uh, another one that I want to bring up is that you really need to understand that you cannot rely on prayer alone. Okay. I know this is probably touchy for some of you, you know, pray yourself through it. Um, but faith by itself, if it does not have works is dead. Let me say that again. Faith, prayer by itself without works is dead. So what that means is you can pray, but you cannot expect that prayer to be the only thing to push you through and get you through this time. Talking to God is a beautiful gift that we have received. And through um, you know, that prayer, you can feel a sense of peace, guidance, a knowingness, a truth. But ultimately, when you pray, you've got to make sure that you're also doing the work. Because it's work that can help you create happiness and movement. 
If you don't move, you don't move. I mean, how do you plan on moving on without movement? You can't. You've got to find works that can help you and tools and strategies and techniques to help you start to move on and walk back toward what you're truly after in life. Which I'm going off topic here a little bit, but that makes me think about this idea of like sometimes why we feel stuck and why we're unable to move on is because we oftentimes don't give ourselves the permission to dream again. To envision what it is that we want. What do you want now that this is over? Have you spent time to consider your future and what you want? Uh, you know, what, you, how you want to feel, who you want to be? Is there, is there a part of your life right now that's lacking besides your relationship? Your relationship's only one side of your life. But are there other sides of your life that's lacking that you could start to fulfill and start to invest in and start to focus more on that could help you today feel better? One of those things is the body. Can you drink more water? Can you get more rest? Can you put your phone down an hour before bedtime so that you just can lay in bed and just release the tension in your body? Can you speak to a family member? Can you reconnect with your with your parents? Can you do these certain things that can help you feel more alive? Can you go work out? Can you can you read a good book? Like there's certain things that you can do, but nonetheless, what you need to do in order to move on is know where the hell you're headed. You've got to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, you'll never begin to move out of the past. And when you believe that your past holds your happiness, there's no reason for you to move on. Why would you move on? I wouldn't expect you to move on if you believe that your hope, happiness, and fulfillment is in the past. You'd want to stay as close to your past as you possibly can. But what you need to do is redirect that attention, that focus, using that same energy that you use in, in the same belief that you use that your hope, happiness, and fulfillment is in the past, you can put your hope, happiness, and fulfillment in the future. Knowing that now you know that there's going to be a greater version of yourself to come out of this. Who you're going to become is going to be the greatest gift and blessing. And who you're becoming through this growth pain is going to help you to attract a better quality partner. A better quality partner comes by you becoming a better quality person. And you can only become a better quality person when you understand and take inventory on the areas of your life that you feel like you're lacking and not doing so good in. Okay, that'll be a topic for another time on how to attract your per perfect partner. Uh, maybe not perfect, but your ideal partner. Someone that you can settle down with if that's something that you're looking for. So I'm excited to talk about that. And lastly, I want to talk about the, the last thing that uh, stops you from moving on and how not to move on. You, you Waiting for time to heal you. You can't keep waiting for time to heal you. Like you can't keep waiting for prayer to heal you. Time alone is not going to heal you. Time plus the work you put in equals healing. Time will work with you to help heal you. However, it will, and it, I mean, however, it won't, I'm sorry. However, it won't do the work for you. So time will work with you, but it won't do the work for you. That simply just being said that when it comes to, you know, everybody says, a lot of people say, it's just like, hey, don't worry, time will, time will do your healing. In time, you will feel better. Bullshit. Time by itself does not heal a broken heart. It's what you do in that time that can help you heal a broken heart. Okay? It's the action. It's the work. It's the steps that you implement into your life that will help you to experience your healing. If you decide to just lay in bed for the next six months and expect that in six months down the road, if you don't deal with your emotions, if you continue to suppress them, if you continue to sleep with other people, if you continue, continue to use um, broken distractions to cope, if you continue just to wait on prayer and continue to pray and you wait for time to heal you, you won't. You'll be exactly where you were six months later. You will be exactly where you are, and you have never changed. Nothing changes if nothing changes, and ideally what you need to do is start to work with time, because time does work with you, but not does do the work for you. So when you start to implement different strategies, different ideas, different topics into your life, you'll begin to move on and create happiness after heartbreak. And now listen... 
If you're interested in creating happiness after heartbreak and to fulfill your own purpose and become your own fulfillment, your own abundance, your own happiness, your own sense of love and build your self-worth after heartbreak, I have a course for you inside of the Happy Heart Academy. It's such a powerful course. Honestly, there's over 20 hours of video content in there for you of deep premium training from me in video format where you can spend time with me where I walk you back to happiness after heartbreak, giving you the things that you need to do today so that you can begin to feel better now. I give you things that you need to do today if you've broken up with somebody yesterday or seven years ago that's going to help you to begin to feel better. And if that's something you're interested in, be sure to click the link below or check out the show notes. You'll see the community.happyheartacademy.com. Enroll into the community. There's a free community, but the academy, there's a members only area. And inside that members only area, you will receive that um, emergency breakup recovery kit that will help you to create your happiness, work through your pain uh, so that you can feel more empowered and regain your self-control, self-confidence back after your heartbreak. Once again, that's inside of the academy at community.happyheartacademy.com. And I hope to see you inside of there. Thanks for listening.